right, so some uh, spotty play for Nebraska through three games. They looked much uh, sharper at home against Northern Illinois, but uh, regardless of the one loss uh, at Colorado, very disappointing. In terms of the Big Ten Western Division Championship, and none of that matters in regards to tangible output in the standings. It all starts uh, this week at Illinois for the Huskers. we got Greg Peterson on the line, joins us from Husker Online. Greg, how you doing, man? I'm doing fine, Mark, but you just had to bring up that Colorado game again, huh? <laughs> I may do that once or twice the rest of the season. Maybe not. Maybe this uh, this stretch drive uh, in the Big Ten play can uh, maybe erase that from a lot of people's memories, uh, but it sure was a disappointment. But uh, I know the, the win was expected against Northern Illinois, but it was supposed to be more like a two-score game. Very respectable MAC opponent that typically challenges for that conference championship. And this is the kind of performance we were expecting from Nebraska start to finish uh, dominated the game. Yeah. I mean, the defensive line really came to play. Um, they dominated the game and limited Northern Illinois to I know, whatever they held them to, but uh, offense, you know, he had a lot of big plays on offense. Uh, I, think, uh, I think it was eight plays of over 20 yards in the first half alone. So the big plays were there. Um, you know, defense had a great goal line stand, uh, you know, held, held Northern Illinois to six points basically on, on, or on defense. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just an overall, it was, uh, one of those performances where, uh, you know, kind of made everybody feel a lot better after that Colorado loss. I mean, the fan base, the coaches, the media, everybody. So now it's on to a big 10 play and, uh, it gets real now. Exactly. It does get real. And uh, the Illini would be a good place to start in regards to uh, trying to get healthy, trying to get healthy and some mojo, some some swag. Uh, the game is on the road, and uh, Illinois can certainly score some points, but have had issues since Lovey Smith. Ironically, being a defensive guy has taken over the program. That's typically uh, the, the more difficult side of the ball to manage and really recruit players that can stop people. Uh, 54 35 was the final last year with the Huskers winning. It may be something close to that, uh, this time around before we get to the breakdown on Illinois and what you would expect out of the Huskers this week. Uh, you got some recruiting news and maybe a few injuries to, uh, update us on. Yeah. Um, Nebraska picked up a, uh, rivals 250 corner out of, uh, Miami central yesterday, uh, Henry Gray, um, you know, four star. Heck of a player, and uh, he's the uh, third recruit out of the state of Florida that Nebraska has so far in this class. Um, two of them are corners. So that's a nice pickup for Nebraska, definitely. Um, Injury-wise, um, safety Cam, Cam Taylor Britz um, went down in the game uh, with a shoulder injury. Um, he was back out on the practice field. Uh, he was wearing a green no-contact jersey yesterday at practice. Um, and then you've got uh, – and I, I don't expect him to play. I think they're, uh, they're going to sit him just for precautionary reasons and, uh, you know, give some other guys a little bit of a chance to play. Like Eric Lee, he's a veteran. And, uh, you know, you might get, a, a, you know, true freshman Noel Pola Gates in there, get him a little playing time too. But then uh, starting uh, left tackle Brandon Hymas uh, also left the game, um, but he has been back at practice uh, the last couple of days. So I wouldn't be surprised if he plays. Um, if he doesn't play, uh, he'll be backed up again by Brock Bando, who actually played very well last week against Northern Illinois. So he might get his taste of uh, some Big Ten play for the first time in his career. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, talking up Nebraska. The Huskers hit the field at 7 o'clock uh, local time, 8 o'clock Eastern time on the Big Ten Network, taking on Illinois in the Big Ten opener. And uh, last week, I noticed, uh, don't know that we can take a whole lot from this, considering the score was 30-5 to five at the half, at the, you know, at that point in the game. At halftime, uh, Nebraska, a 14-point favorite, uh, proved to be much better than that, uh, really put together a full game. But Diedrich Mills with 11 carries ran off for a buck 16 big game. He did have the one the really big long run. Maurice Washington four carries. Are we working into a running back uh, rotation? Uh, how do you see that playing out into the future? I I think it's still kind of the same going forward with what they've been doing. Um, 
you know, Maurice Washington is going to be the starter and uh, Diedrich Mills is going to come in and, and shoulder half of that load uh, and then sprinkle a little Wondell Robinson in there too out of the backfield. But uh, well, that's just the way those carries went. Uh, Mo Washington's carries all seemed like they were like 50-yard runs. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, they weren't, of course. But, uh, you know, and, and Diedrich had that nice – a nice touchdown run right up the gut and uh he's starting to feel it now and he's starting to to run like he's accustomed to running so i, I look for this you know just to be kind of a three-headed monster backfield going forward and they also got a chance for a true freshman ramir johnson to get in a little bit and he looked pretty good too uh running the backs coach ryan held is super high on that kid and he wants to get him as much playing time as he can Ramirez Johnson with three carries uh, last week. And, and again, uh, Mo Washington, as you mentioned, ripped off a 60 yarder, four carries for 63. Diedrich Mills, 116 on just 11 carries. And he had a long run as uh, the Huskers dominated up front. Uh, talk about dominating up front. This is something we saw the last few years with Nebraska defensively up front, not being able to push uh, into the opposing backfield, get those disruptive plays, those tackles for losses. But right now they've got 27 through three games. So this is just a completely different level of effort on that side of the ball. And we expected it because of the maturity of the seniors, but also Darian Daniels coming into the program. But um, certainly they're they're living up to expectations uh, on the defensive front of making some big plays in the backfield. Yeah, they've figured it out, um, <laughs> to say the least. Um, that, that, that front seven is really playing well. Um, and with all the depth on that defensive line, they keep rotating guys in. So they are always fresh up there. So they're getting all the all, all those those quarterback hits and hurries that they weren't getting in the past. And uh, you know they have they have forced what nine turnovers now, um, which ranks first in the Big Ten and uh, fifth in the nation right now. And they only had twenty all of last year, and we're here at the quarter point here and. So they're already halfway to where they were last year. So, yeah, and, and their play up front is really opening up that back end and letting those guys, you know, ball hawk and, and take care of business out there. Unfortunately, like we talked about, Cam Taylor Britt being out. But, uh, you know, it just gives some other guys an opportunity, like I said earlier. But, uh, yeah, th that defensive line <laughs> is really impressive right now. Yeah, so on the flip side, in regards to concerns, uh, you look at special teams, and obviously the the issue at kicker is lingering. And in addition to that, uh, five blocked kicks. Now, that's that's an enormous rate for a season. Uh, the, the teams don't get anything close to that for the season, but three games, five blocked kicks. Uh, so I'm sure that was an emphasis in practice this week. Uh, there was five blocked kicks in that game alone last Saturday. Oh. And Northern Illinois had two as, as well. Okay. So. Yep. <laughs> it was a crazy game. Um, but, yeah, you know, I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, uh, they're they're, they're going to get this kicking thing all figured out. Um, Barrett Pickering's getting closer to coming back, it looks like. Uh, he was suited up last week. Um, he probably won't make the trip again this week. So um, Isaac Armstrong is going to still handle those kicking duties. Um, and then Lane McCallum who got a chance to play a little bit too, he, who's a transfer from uh, Air Force, um, he'll he'll also do some of the kicking. So they're going to send two kickers this week. And, uh, you know, as, as long as the line can hold up and uh, keep those blocks from happening, I think they should be okay. <laughs> now, with uh, all the disruptive plays up front and the defensive line being uh, much better than it has been and as good as uh, advertised, uh, what we expected, uh, the secondary getting torched on a fairly regular basis, not so much against uh, Northern Illinois with uh, 250 total yards, although most of that came through the air. But South Alabama, anemic offense, uh, statistically last year expected much of the same, and they were able to get off on some plays. And then obviously Colorado in the second half went off. Uh, so the secondary's got to uh, play better. They do, they do. And, I mean, a lot of it, too, is that uh, – you know, Nebraska on the on the offensive side, uh, especially last week, you know, was scoring very quickly. And so the Nebraska defense has actually played more snaps than any other defense in the country right now. So they're on the field an awful long time. Um, you know, so in those first couple of, of games, you saw some of those breakdowns back there in the backside. But, um, you know, last week kind of proved that they can they can clamp it down and uh, – 
and get the job done. And as long as, uh, you know, those guys up front are still doing their thing, um, I, I think you're going to see a lot less of those big plays, you know, going against the Huskers. Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, breaking down Nebraska. We've been leaning on uh, Greg Peterson in uh, the last few months from Husker Online to help us break down Nebraska football. It's good to be in the season now, three games in, two and one out of conference, and it's all Big Ten, nine straight weeks, uh, not the bye week, but in terms of nine straight games uh, to finish off the season. And this team picked by the media and many to win it all in the Big Ten Western Division. My week four college football predictions and weekly predictions, uh, you can grab the link in the description section below. Voice of college football community, 44 and 28 against the spread thus far this season. The road woes have been there uh, last season and then carried into the trip to Boulder uh, in the second half, blowing a 17-0 lead. Not a whole lot of people are concerned necessarily about Illinois. They just came off a loss to Eastern Michigan, 34-31, having their problems on the defensive side again. And they've got a secondary that's really been torched. Uh, so we wouldn't expect it this week, but who knows? Uh, you've been in some scoring fests with Illinois in recent years. Again, I mentioned the uh, 89 points scored last year. Uh, but going on the road at Illinois, uh, they've given a few teams some scares in recent years. I know Penn State got into a tussle with them last year there so uh, any concerns from that standpoint of it just simply being a road game i don't think so i mean this week the guys they're really dedicating this to coach frost to get his, his first road win at nebraska um it's, it's a pretty big deal for the whole team and the whole staff so i expect them to come out and take care of business um you know that that game last week that illinois game last week was was a total head scratcher to me um, and I think Nebraska is going to put up a lot of points on Illinois and, you know, Illinois, they, they're, they're a different offense this year. Uh, you know, last year they had a quarterback that could really run and they really counted on him, but, uh, now they have more of a traditional pocket guy. Um, but they do have a really good running back. He's the one thing that really, that, that scares you a little bit. Um, he's, he's been having a heck of a season. So, you know, I'm not... Overly concerned, though. I think I think the black shirts are going to come to play, and uh, you know, show that they have something else to prove in conference play here. You know, to be one of the top defenses in the country. So, it, it, you know, in Illinois, you know, we heard reports this week of uh, they Illinois is giving away student tickets just to try to get people to come, and you know, that's probably after that loss they had last week. You probably had. 10, 15,000 fans that probably, eh, I don't think I want to go to this this week. So you're going to have a lot of Husker fans down there. So it's going to be a lot like Colorado. You know, it's a, it's an easy drive. They can, Husker fans can leave of Saturday morning and get there for the game Saturday night. So, you know, I look for, uh, I look for Nebraska to have a pretty dominating performance this Saturday. Yeah, as you mentioned, at running back, uh, they they move it pretty well with Reggie Corbin, 180 yards rushing, 7.5 per carry. Uh, Dre Brown also chips in at 5.5 yards per carry. Brandon Peters, former Michigan quarterback, actually won the job there, played a ton in 2017 with the Mason Blue. Uh, they didn't necessarily endear themselves to him or vice versa because he had, a for a Michigan team, a rough go. Uh, didn't throw many touchdowns to the wide receivers. One of the worst passing offenses in the nation. They finished eight and five. He moves on to Illinois. Nine TDs, two picks uh, against the likes of UConn, Kent State, and uh, of course, uh, Eastern uh, Michigan in the loss, 34 31. But he's uh, hit on 63% and he's gotten the ball downfield a little bit for uh, this team and good enough, again, coming out of high school to be recruited and signed at Michigan. All right, Greg, we appreciate you stopping by. Greg Peterson, uh, Husker Online. Uh, we try to flag him down each and every week to uh, get us updated on Nebraska football. All right, uh, Greg, unless you got anything else, we appreciate you stopping by and enjoy the game. All right, will do. Thanks a lot, and we'll uh, talk to you again next week.